welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right. Hope everyone is doing well. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. All right. We're going to get right on into our program. Our program today, we're going to be discussing a very uh, important topic, a very, very touchy top, top, chick, top, top, chick, top, chick. <laughs> topic is what I'm trying to say. Topic, excuse me. Uh, a very important topic we're going to be discussing today. And that topic is Christian courtship and dating, Christian courtship and dating. Uh, we're going to be discussing that on today. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be going in a uh, little detail and, and talking about the things that uh, we should be doing uh, with the Christian courtship and dating. Uh, I'm trying to pull up this, uh, pull up something here. Give me one second here. Uh, hope everybody has a, has having a wonderful week. And we pray that you all have a wonderful week and keep everyone up in prayer to ones that are going through some things. Uh, through bereavements and everything, uh, keep them in your prayers uh, because it's very important that we have them in our prayers. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we keep them in our prayers. All right, we're going to uh, go ahead and into our topic, Christian courtship and dating. Uh, first of all, uh, the Bible tells us to flee from uh, lust and fornication. And uh, these are some of the things that should be taught in our churches because uh, a lot of times, especially churches with uh, a lot of young people, uh, anywhere from uh, teenagers and up, uh, you know, to a certain age of, uh, I would say about uh, 30 or 35. Uh, and it goes for everyone, actually. Uh, but what we're talking about is uh, Christian courtship and dating. Uh, a lot of churches uh, come against it. Uh, I don't come against it personally. What I uh, recommend in, uh, uh, in what we do at our ministry is uh, we talk to people, we teach people, and that's what should be going on in the churches. Uh, I remember years ago, uh, we talked about this subject uh, before. Uh, the church I was going to, um, they did not come against it. What they did is they set the young people down and they taught them what to look for, what to do, and what not to do. Uh, because when people are taught, they uh, tend to uh, to uh, trend more into the right direction rather than uh, them being t told what to do. Uh, because a lot of times when people are being told what to do, uh, it can come out as being offensive. It can come out as being uh, putting a, a negative uh, uh, vibe on uh, court Christian courtship. And there's nothing wrong with Christian courtship. That's how you meet your soulmate. And when you meet your soulmate, you'll know it because you, first of all, you've been taught how to or what to look for in a soulmate. And you'll know not just to be looking on the outside because, uh, again, man, I, and I've always said man is very visual. Uh, God looks on the inside, but man is very uh, visual. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that... Uh, we are following the word of God. And again, the word of God says fleeing, uh, flee fortification. Every sin that a man do it is without the body. Uh, but he that committed fornication sent it against his own body. And uh, what we know e not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not of your own. Uh, ye are bought with a price. Uh, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is our, of God. Uh, so uh, we have to make sure that we are following the word of God. And there is a, a correct way of having a courtship and dating as a Christian. I remember and as, as I was talking uh, before, uh, the church that we attended years ago when I was a teenager, uh, coming up just in the years of being you know, older as an older teenager, uh, they uh, set us down and they taught us what to do and what not to do. 
And what they would do is uh, when young people wanted, you know, they, they were interested in uh, someone, they would go out, uh, you know, go out on, on a date or something with uh, a chaperone date. They wouldn't go, they would never let them go alone. They would go on a chaperone date and get to know the person uh, because that's a lot of times what happens in marriages that, that don't last uh, because they don't know the people. And then when they uh, get married to people that they don't know, things come up that they find out that they uh, don't have any, a lot in common or don't have things in common. Uh, so we have to make sure that uh, we are, again, following the word of God. So uh, what they did is they sat them down and taught them what to do, and what not to do, what to look for, what you shouldn't be doing. They were taught that they were not told that. And there's a big difference between being taught something and being told something. Because usually when you tell somebody something, they want to do the opposite. <laughs> but when you teach them, uh, teaching them is you give them the consequences of what could happen. Uh, you tell them what, uh, you know, the word of God. You know, you tell them about fleeing fornication. And that's why, you know, you have this setting. You have a Christian setting when you go out uh, chaperone with a married couple. Uh, you go out with them, a younger married couple, you know, you go out with them and, and get to see how married people uh, operate because your intention should be to get married, not to just be dating uh, everybody you see. You should be uh, dating in order to find your soulmate uh, so you can uh, walk down the aisle. And before you walk down the aisle, there's things you should know about that person. There's things that uh, you should uh know uh how they serve in god are they serious are they just there just to be there uh those things that they, they should know uh you should know uh, everything about them you it should not be any uh major surprise there's always got to be some surprises because you'll never know everything about a person but all the major things you should know about that person uh, you you should know you know where they come from, how their parents are, if they go to church, if they don't go to church, and if they're uh, if there's someone that you met in your church and you're interested in, and you're uh, being chaperoned when you go out, you go out as in groups, uh, which is a wonderful thing. You just go out in groups and just have a wonderful, good, clean fun. Uh, don't make it something dirty. You know, a lot of times we make things that are completely innocent. We make them seem dirty and, and people feel like they have to sneak around because trust me, when you say, Oh, you shouldn't do that. Or you can't do this. And you better not do that. Trust me. They're going to find a way to do it. So you want to make sure it's in a controlled environment, uh, where both people, are, you know, you, uh, go out as groups and you show how to, uh, act and how to, uh, conduct yourself as Christians, you know, and, and when you conduct yourself as Christians, then the relationship will be based, be Christian based on, uh, it'll be based on Christian being a Christian. And, uh, you know, and, uh, it's, it's so, cause there's so many things that are going on. There's so many people out there that are deceiving people. That's why you have to be taught. And when you're taught properly, you'll recognize when, uh, someone is being, or trying to be deceiving, because there's so many, uh, there's some people that even go to church just to be deceiving because they figure they get a church girl because uh, they think they're easier, think they're naive or something like that. Uh, but you have to be, watch out for wolves and uh, sheep clothing. So uh, that's why uh, it's important to have uh, singles ministry where you teach our young people, teach them what to look for, what how to conduct themselves when they go out in public and, and when they're uh, together, if they're in, in, interested in uh, someone in the church. Uh, don't make it something that, you know, that's negative, because if you make it something negative, uh, they're going to find a way to do it anyway. So we want to make it uh, positive in our churches. And years ago, they used to have, uh, that's where the mothers would come in, they would teach our young uh, women what to do, what to look for in a young man. And if he doesn't do this, he might not be the one for you. They, they, they really set the young, the young ladies down and they taught them. And the men of the church, or they would uh, teach the young men. And, uh, you know, if you, because uh, a lot of times, especially in the area that I came up with, and most of the uh, young men that I went to church with, 
and we didn't have a uh, father in the home, you know, but I was fortunate enough. Uh, I didn't have a, a father in the home, but I was fortunate enough to have uh, my uh, grandfather that I, that I can go to and talk to and everything. Uh, but he passed away uh, right uh, when I graduated from high school, he passed away. Uh, so I no longer had that, but I had the men in church, like the deacons, the elders in the church, and, you know, I would sit down and talk with them. And even the pastor at the time, that uh, the pastor that I had, I, as a, a young adolescent, I would sit down and uh, talk to him, and, and, you know, he would tell me, oh, it's natural to be attracted uh, to the opposite sex. That's how God planned it, you know. Uh, so uh, be happy if you're <laughs> attracted to the opposite sex because you know what goes on nowadays. So uh, just teach them the proper way to do things. And when you teach people the proper way to do things, uh, you don't have to worry about things happening because things are going to happen anyway, but you, you're as mo- it's less likely for things to happen. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are doing these things and decently and in order. Uh, you know, and we have these programs in the church, uh, the singles ministries. And, you know, for those that don't want to get married, let them know it's OK if you don't want to get married or you're not thinking about getting married at, at you know, uh, right away or, or the ones that are thinking about getting married or that's their agenda. They want to get married someday. Prepare them, you know, because there's so many people that go into marriage unprepared. And because no one, you know, because sometimes uh, it, it's kind of an odd subject to talk about in the home. You might, you know, you might touch on it a little bit, say, don't do this, no, this. You might touch on it a little bit. But if it's in a setting in in your church, it tends to go over well because you have other young people there that can relate to what you're going through. And you're being taught by someone that's uh, either professional or have the experience in the field. And, um uh, and we would, you know, go out in groups and, you know, we just had a good time uh, just just being young people and enjoying uh, life because their life is uh, so short. So we have to make sure that we are doing these things in our churches, teaching our young people, uh, because uh, for, first of all, they're going to uh, that's why a lot of them think, oh, there's no fun in church. Uh, why do I have to go to church? There's no fun. Uh, I'm telling you, when we were uh, coming up as young people. We had so much fun growing up together, and uh, the f- friendships that I had uh, growing up in church are they're lasting friendships. I can call any of the people I went to church with uh, years ago, and we can sit down and talk for, for hours, you know, because we have so many uh, fun and clean memories that we uh, share together as coming up as teenagers and young uh, men and women in the church. And it's very important because the young men and women are part of the backbone of the foundation of our churches and we want to make sure that they are staying in churches they stay interested in church uh, because you could have the best school in the world but if no one is interested or if you have students that are not interested in uh, who are you teaching no one is learning anything because they're not interested in that's why you have to keep people interested in uh, presenting that's how you present the word of God you know uh, you can catch more uh, flies with uh, honey than vinegar. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you present the word of God where it's uh, uh, showing God's love in it. When you show God's love in it, uh, everything will work out just wonderful because uh, that's what God's all about. And he had uh, 12 disciples, and <laughs> most of them, all of them, they had some kind of issues. But he never one time... Uh, down talk them or talk down to them everything he did was a teaching you know and that's how we should be with our young people everything every time we talk to them it should be a lesson or teaching them something that they're going to be able to uh use uh, later on in life uh, so that's what we want to uh do uh here especially at our, our ministry at the uh, new zion christian center that's what we're all about we're about teaching our people uh, and because there's so many, you know, because of lack of knowledge, the people uh, perish because of lack of knowledge. Uh, and, and a lot of times we learn uh, the gospel, we, but we don't learn, is not taught to us. We learn the gospel, but it, again, let me say it again. We learn the gospel, but it's not taught to us. We know the gospel, but it hasn't been taught to us. It has to be taught to you in different subjects because 
every subject you can think of or everything that you could think of it's in the word of god in the word of god every topic you can think of love marriage uh sex all that is in the word of god and it's taught in the word of god and everything uh, concerning marriage is covered in the word of god everything concerning courtship is in the word of god so we have to make sure that we are teaching our young people and not telling our young people uh and not just the young people any people make sure that we are teaching them and not telling them and this is pastor wilson and we're going to be signing off until we meet again with let's talk marriage all right we want to take this opportunity to invite you out to our services at new zion christian center we located at 15014 displaying street in plainfield illinois amen 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 we got to be praying for each and one of you and keep us in your prayers and we'll be praying for you as well until we meet again this is pastor larry with let's talk marriage all right all right